I am Phil Ashey from the American Anglican Council with another episode of One Big Idea, where we look at the scriptures for the coming Sunday and ask, how does this apply to my life, to church, and to engaging the culture? The lessons for this upcoming Sunday in Epiphany are from Judges chapter 6, the calling of Gideon, um, Psalm 85, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and Luke 5, uh, where uh, we have the calling of the first disciples. And the one big idea I'd like to suggest this week uh, from Luke chapter 5 is this, that um, Jesus wants your whole life and not just a slice of it. He wants your whole life and not just a slice of it. It's interesting that the setting here is Jesus standing by the lake and people listening to the word of God and people you know, crowding around him so much that he needs to use Peter's boat as a pulpit. And so as long as Jesus is using the boat for this religious purpose, Simon's okay with that. You know, it's that that religious slice of life and the boat can be Jesus' pulpit. But then in verse four, when he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Well, now, Lord, you're meddling in my business, Right. I mean, the boat's been turned back to Simon. He's a fisherman. He knows a whole heck of a lot more than fish about fishing, of course, than Jesus, right? And this is kind of like, you know, the pastor telling the CEO how to run his business. But Peter, you know, you can imagine him saying, Lord, I think I know a little more about fishing, about this area of my life than you do. But all right, I'll give it a try. After all, we've been out fishing all night. We haven't caught a thing. And then, of course, they go out and they have the biggest catch they've ever had in their entire lives. And Simon's response is, Lord, in astonishment, go away from me, for I am a sinful man. This is about Jesus wanting to come into every area of our life, not just the Sunday morning religious time, not just the Bible studies and the church activities we participate in, but our family life, the way we spend our money, the way we vote, um, the businesses that we run, uh, the, the families that we parent. Jesus wants to be involved in every aspect of your life. That's what this story is about. And so the application is this, you know, when, when Peter recognizes this with uh, both uh, a, a terrible humility and recognition of his own sinfulness, and he falls down before Jesus and says, I'm, I'm unworthy, uh, go away from me, Lord. What's Jesus' wonderful response? He says, don't be afraid. There's grace You know, from now on, you will catch men. It's in that moment of allowing Jesus into his whole life and not just a slice of it, that Peter experiences God's call in his life to become a fisher of men. And so for us, for the church, this deeper discipleship of allowing Christ into every area of our life and not just that sliver of Sunday morning or even a whole day, but every part of our life is the precondition, along with our own humility and sense of unworthiness, to discovering God's very call in our life, just as Peter discovered from Jesus. What does this say about our culture? What it says about our culture is this, that there's no area in our culture where the gospel should be fenced out. No No place where uh, it says no trespassing in our culture as we engage it. We need to have the same openness to Christ's call on us as we engage our culture in the the justice issues of our day, uh, in the way that we vote, uh, in the issues that are near and dear to us. Uh, Again, Jesus wants us to allow him lordship in every area of our life and in every area of our culture. That may mean speaking a word uh, and being a fisher of men where we are not always welcome. That's okay. Uh, Like Peter, we're simply called to be obedient. 
So as you think about these lessons, think about the humility with which Gideon responded to the call of God in his life. Think about the humility and awareness of sin uh, that, um, that Peter responded with. May we be of the same mindset, welcoming Jesus into every area of our life and not just that religious life slice, but every area, even the places that are uh, fenced off in our society as secular do not trespass. Let's not be afraid of that, but say, how can we engage even those places with the good news and the miraculous power of Jesus Christ? He turns that miracle into mission. How can he turn the miracle of his coming into your life into mission for you? God bless you, and we'll see you next week.